Hi, welcome. So what we're going to kind of discuss here in this video or this portion of this video is uh, the phase relationships in a balanced resistive Y load. So what I'm talking about is I've got a resistive load here, right? I connect up my, you know, line one, my line two, and my line three, right? And again, what I'm, we're talking about specifically is a balanced load. So in each of these resistors, my R is the same, is equal to one another. And because it is R, my power factor is one, All right? So it doesn't matter what ohmic value we use or what voltage or what current we use. We're not talking about numbers here. We're just talking about the relationships. So looking at this and looking at my phasor diagram, right? We know that our phase voltages are gonna appear on this phasor diagram. So our phase voltages, we would see VA to N, VB to N, and V C to N. I mean, obviously they would look a lot nicer if I were to use a protractor and a ruler, but this is all just for conversation's sake. Now, the way I always approach my phasor diagrams is I do my phase voltages, then I do my currents, and then I go back with my line voltages for Y, just so it doesn't get too cluttered. So what I wanna think about is the relationship here. So we're talking, let's talk about phase A first. So that's from A, right? This would be phase A here. So phase A to neutral is my voltage is here at zero. Now the relationship between voltage and current through for a resistor is that they are what we call in phase with each other, right? Voltage and current are in phase with each other for a resistive load. Now what that also means is that the phase angle is zero degrees, right? And we know our power factor is one. So when I'm looking at this resistive load in phase A, I know that the current is going to be here in phase with the voltage. So that's I A. All right. Now we can kind of do the same thing with all three of them. So here was phase B on this particular circuit. Well, phase B, the current is going to be in phase with the voltage. So what that means is down here, my current is I B in phase with that voltage. And then finally we come to phase C where we're going to see the exact same relationship. The current flowing through phase C is going to be in phase with the voltage across phase C. Not the line voltage, but the phase voltage. My phase voltage is here, VC to N. That means my current is going to be right there, I C. So that's our current and our phase relationship. Last step is I'm gonna throw my line voltages onto this diagram. Now I always remember my line voltages. Line voltage is root three larger than phase voltage and line voltage leads phase voltage by 30 degrees. So that's gonna be somewhere like, can you, I don't know if you can see that. There we go, V A to B. V, B to C, and again, not to scale at all here, and V, B to C. This one up here was actually V, C to A. All right, so that's kind of what your phasor diagram would look like for a purely resistive, balanced three-phase load. Now, the big thing with that three-phase balanced load, and the nice thing is that because everything is balanced, there is no current going to be flowing on that neutral conductor. So when it's in a balanced load, we're not going to see any current flowing back on that neutral. Um, so that's just those relationships. Thanks for watching. Um, you can check out other parts as well. I'm going to discuss a balanced lagging load as well as a balanced capacitive load. Uh, and I have a couple other videos with calculations as well. Have an awesome day.